If you've been wondering how to get the nice looking clean URLs using URL slugs in Bubble, then this is the video for you. So as we can see here on this photo, the nice SEO friendly URL slugs is definitely something that you want to get set up for your Bubble app. So let's go and see how to do that. And in this video, what you're gonna to get to see is a site that was actually built prior to Bubble releasing um, their URL slugs back in the day. So in this site, we actually have this kind of not so nice looking thing, but maybe we would want to update it so that it uses the name of whatever this is. And then we'll, I'll also note that why something like this might be important to you is a lot of times websites 10 years ago were just like a static uh, HTML page where the more advanced ones were dynamically driven by the, the contents of the database. As this, this is obviously something that existed 10 years ago, but its availability to normal people to be able to create has grown in recent years and especially with the advent of no code. So when you have a bunch of items in a database that could generate URLs dynamically, uh, just like all of the stuff in Amazon is actually just, you know, a database and then they do, they show up uh, all the database data on templated pages, uh, similar to how these pages are exactly the same um, for all of the items that, you know, exist in a database. So that concept being displayed here, what we want to do then is we want to find a way to just display this as a slug. So easy enough, how we're going to do that is we're going to take two steps. First and foremost, over here on the page, when you go and set this, I know there are uh, there's even a video by Bubble themselves about slug setup, and uh, not to repeat the content there, but I, I'm making this video as a uh, addition to it because I think there warrants more discussion around the SEO value of doing this, and so that's the purpose of this video. So the type of content for this page, oh yeah, we're just gonna dive over to the development area. So in that, in that video and just how things work in general, once you set the type of content here, and then let's go with uh, probably the name. And so, so the way that Bubble is gonna do this is that if you don't have a slug set, it's gonna set the name and then it's gonna set the unique ID uh, as the value in the URL. Whereas if um, you have the slug set, it's just gonna take that slug set. So then that leads us to step two, which is when you are creating an item in your database, your world is likely gonna be different than this world here in that you will have uh, you know, things being created from scratch, which this app does as well, but this app also has you know, a number of these listings um, in it, well, not in, not in the, uh, the development database, but over in the live database, a number of things already in it. And so let's start out for how you might set, set this all up. So first and foremost, once you have slugs set in the database, what you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that your page and whatever is being displaying things here is going to use, so for example, here I used to be searching for this uh, URL, or the URL's uh, string here, and now, so I'm just gonna go ahead and clear that out, and then I'm just gonna grab the current page's forgotten listing. Cool. So. Now, any links out on my site or on your site that would uh, send people here, for example, from this search page, such as this link here, we're actually going to change this and update this to an internal, and then we're going to send it the current uh, listing. So then now, the, the process of clicking on one of these and getting this shown up, we're still looking at the live version of this, we haven't pushed it live yet, but now we're gonna go and we're gonna get to see this um, after I deploy this live. So let's just say URL, update, confirm. And so we're gonna get to see a secondary version of this. So let's go to the live site. We're gonna get to see a secondary version of this. Here, in that the secondary version is that it takes the name and then it also takes this U unique ID. However, next thing we're gonna do is we are going to head over to the live version of the site. 
and we're going to actually edit this database entries value. So I'm going to search for this, having that unique ID here, and then I'm actually going to ba -dum -bum -bum -bum, grab this name here, and this is what I'm going to use for this slug. And then after, I sh after showing this, because again, we're working just with this particular example here, but you, in your world, you actually will probably be more likely creating things from scratch, but uh, super, what's the word for it, thorough in this video because you get to see it both ways. So you can see it kind of after the fact. So now, uh, for this particular one, let's go and see if we can find it. Let's see if we refresh that and see what it shows us. So we can see that it automatically noticed that it had the slug there and removed that thing. So here we have a URL where it is, you know, much more like the SEO friendly URL slugs that you're likely trying to achieve with your uh, setup. So the next question is, all right, with all of these things in the database, like we were just kind of looking at here, um, if we were to, when these are created, what you want to want to do is over in the world of workflows. Now I don't actually have something set up for this one, but let's just kind of make one up. So when the page is loaded, yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll head to development. When the page is loaded, well, let's just say do every five seconds. We'll get a fresh one here that we can look at, maybe. <laughs> or we'll just refresh it because, okay. So it's likely that you're gonna have something in your world where you are creating a new thing. And then note here, this is the set a thing slug. So when you create a new thing, and in this case, it is a listing, there's not, we don't really go here and set the slug there. So you'll just create your thing, and then you'll set all the fields of whatever it is, whether you're um, you know, dealing with uh, uh, cars or trains, planes, and what, automobiles, whatever. Um, whatever it is that your thing is in your app, then uh, after you've created that new thing, you'll set the slug based upon this, and then maybe you'll take uh, the result of step one's you know, name or something like that. And then so that will set the slug automatically, and then you wouldn't end up with a database filled with, well, okay, and we've also left the, uh, the live database, but the one with all the gazillion, gazillion uh, listings, uh, you know, when you, build, when you build something, sometimes you have to go back and update the things that you build, which is the case of this one. But again, the tutorial is for uh, someone to learn it both ways so that you can be an expert in Bubble because that is what this channel is all about. I uh, hope you found this video helpful. Again, just to recap in the final uh, part of this video, what you want to do is A, you want to set a slug using that workflow that we just saw with after you've created a new thing, you set a slug on it. So for anything that you have tons and tons of stuff that you're trying to make those stuff things, because I don't know your particular scenario, but in mine, they're listings of uh, photography places to take cool uh, old timey photos. But in yours, it could be something different. So whatever that is, set the slug, and then you'll get it set up like that. But then also over on the page that displays that, so you'll have one page and then it displays however many thousands or hundreds or tens of thousands of records in your database. I've heard people in forums and other places that say they have a million records um, in their database. Then you'll want to set the type of content there to that type of thing. You'll want to pass that data there and make sure that that data is, and then obviously, you know, just use the current uh, pages thing anywhere you're trying to access that data on the page. And then the last thing I will say, Prior to this video, and also in the description of this video, there will be a link uh, about how to do SEO in Bubble. And what that is, is that it's gonna share with you a method, and I'll just re-review it here, is that once you create, uh, you can expose under settings, SEO meta tags, you can expose a sitemap file uh, for your site. And then you can click a couple of those. And then you can go to uh, that. So let's actually do it here in this case. We'll go to, uh, not on this one, because Safari doesn't, uh, so we're gonna go sitemap.xml. We'll just see what we get here. Okay, so actually maybe we only have one at the uh, version test for now. 
Okay, so you'll get something that looks like this, and you'll want to follow this structure, and then for each of these here, you'll basically, you, won't, you don't want version test, but you'll want to fill in the URLs for all of the items and all of the pages, whether you got thousands, you know, you only got to do it once, so you just uh, make all of the things. Uh, well, as it gets updated, I suppose, there is some maintenance there. Um, but why is this important? Because if you want your uh, site to do well in terms of SEO, then you'll want to list that sitemap in your custom robots.txt here. That way the Google, uh, Google bot can, and, and I guess other bots as well um, these days, can also access your uh, sitemap and see and discover all of the content on your site, including all of those you know amazing pages in your database that can potentially rank for keywords that people are searching for, which again is probably why you came to this video in the first place to understand how to make these nice UR nice looking URLs, but why so that you can get discovered in search engines, get that free organic search traffic to your site, which I hope you crush it. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in another video.